Hello, hello. This is Postgres FM. As usual, I don't remember episode number. Actually, I don't care. I know 100 something. And my name is Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. And uh, as usual, my co host is Michael PG Mustard. Hi, Michael. Hello, Nikolai. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, good as well. Thanks. I actually feel, feel very good after therapy session we had last week. Glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's your choice. I'm glad you chose very practical topic, technical, practical. So yeah. What is it? Yeah, I chose index only scans. I was aiming for technical and practical, but I also wanted something that's still beginner friendly. Like I think there's, there's enough depth we can go into with index only scans. I'm hoping there's something in here for everybody, but. I definitely see some beginners not fully understand index only scans, how to get them or that even knowing that they exist, really truly understanding the benefits and also the, the downsides when they go wrong or like when they aren't so efficient. So yeah, lots to cover, I think, uh, but we can start nice and gently. Yeah. And, uh, since this topic is related to good optimization, Mm, it's, yeah. it's your field, I would say, because of PG Master. So I will let you to be in driver's seat. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, well, I feel like you are as much, probably more of an expert in this field than me still. But yes, it's definitely something I've had to look into a lot for the product I work on. And we've got a couple of tips around this it, within the product. But I actually wanted to start like super basic, like index only scans a type of scan. I think it's worth covering that we've we've got other scan types and Postgres gets to choose between them in certain situations. We can cover like when it gets the choice of doing an index only scan, but I wanted to start with even the absolute basics. If for example, we don't have any indexes, the only scan option we have for a table is sequential, sequential scan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Going through the pages in order, one at a time. And then sequential if we have an or parallel sequential, if we distinguish. <laughs> True. You consider that different type? Yeah, interesting. Well, well, uh, technically it's different. Uh, planner, the planner has to make a choice, right? Mm, true, true. Oh, actually, this came up. Uh, maybe this is too off topic, but um, do you think parallelism should be on by default, like with Postgres? Like maximum well, workers per gather? I think JIT should be off by default. This is when it came up, yeah. I got bitten very badly again, and it was in my, in, like in, in my home. I had bad, 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 bad situation. I, I don't understand why JIT is on. I, I completely don't understand. Like it, every, yeah, it, it I just hurts uh, workloads, and that's it. So yeah, I, I think uh, random page cost should be closer to sec page. I, I will discuss this, right? Random, yeah. page, random page cost cost adjustment, and we discussed it a few times. And as for Parallelism, I like kind of, I saw Jeremy Schneider's opinion yeah. that, that maybe in some cases it's better to switch it off to have more predictable behavior of query processing. Because if you, well, there are many things like that. Uh, if you have parallelism turned on, which is on by default, uh, two additional workers, uh, mm -hmm. usually. But uh, there are several such things, uh, and w definitely it's our topic today. Index-only scans is unpredictable thing, and heap-only tuple updates is unpredictable thing. And I saw quite recently, I saw talking with customers, I saw opinion uh, which is probably reasonable opinion from from backend engineers, or, or like, oh, this is something quite unpredictable. We have many, many, many installations, various situations, different Postgres infrastructures. So if we think we, we cannot, if, if it was only one cluster, we should think, oh, this is, this is like our pet. We will take care of behavior closely, watch it closely. But if, if you have thousands of setups, you cannot rely on such things. And maybe you will prefer like, let's, let's like raise this question. And in the end, maybe we'll try to, to answer ourselves. So. To have predictable behavior, maybe you should switch off parallelism, uh, stop relying on heap-only heap tuple updates, hot updates, 
And also stop relying on index only scans because they can degrade to regular index scans, right? If or, he yeah, touched. or even slightly worse, I think. So yeah, let's go back to basics. Basics. Uh, also, question. Do you feel the name is kind of off? If we had uh, name choices made right now, maybe index-only scans would be named as index scans, and index, index scans would be named like, I don't know, like index heap scans or something, right? Because... Other, it's it's hard to like you need to explain it and if people don't work with Postgres planner every day they they forget and they expect index index scan is what deals with only indexes but then index only scan what is it? Yeah, so, that's a really good that's a really good transition into yeah. what these are. Yeah, so index scans came first and I think that's probably like why we're stuck with that name and in Postgres in a lot of other database management systems, not including Postgres, you can have, you have index organized tables, but, but in Postgres, we don't have that. We have a heap and indexes are, are what is often called secondary. So to look something up via an index, we'll check first in the index and then that will point us to the right place in the heap to find that row. Probably so, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, At least page is right, simple. but uh, offset might be uh, wrong, right? Yeah, go well, back to hot again. Let's keep it simple right. to start with. Yeah, um, for simple, yes, with index points, but it doesn't know if this tuple is is alive or dead. This is yes. This is why yes. we need to check heap. Or or even, I guess not even like alive or dead, but visible. Like it might be alive to new. Well, right, visible to current transaction. Visible, exactly. Cool. So. That that becomes important in a moment when, in fact, we until you know when in, index only scans were added to Postgres. I found right. out it was it was not very long. Nine point two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, not that long. Like in the in the history. I remember of living without them them very long, of course. Mm. And uh, this mantra like uh, indexes don't store visibility information. I first heard twenty years ago, and it was a rule. Like we. Index scan must consult heap to understand visibility. Yes. So, and that, and when looking back at, in fact, the wiki includes, the Postgres wiki includes a really good entry on index only scans and explains that the majority of the work to add index only scans was work on the visibility map to make it crash safe. So that I found that fascinating looking into it for this episode. I didn't know that until yesterday. So yeah. Super fascinating. So the index only scan probably should actually explain what it is and does. Uh, if the data that we need for the query is already in the index, so very typical for a B tree index, not for all index types, but in a B tree index, we have the data that we're indexing in the index. If that's all we need for the query so we're running. If we don't use select star, select asterisk, if we only select, for example, columns which are in the index. This is yes. condition, right? Yes, exactly. So if the columns we're selecting are in the index, or for example, if we're doing like an aggregation like count star, we're, we're not really selecting a column, but we, uh, yeah. So yeah, there's like a count couple of cases. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And yeah, and if the index type supports it, like B trees do, then we can get an index only scan. So yeah, really cool feature. Mm. This is like, okay, we deal only with values which are present in index keys. Index keys maybe can be called, maybe no, maybe it's a bad idea to call that. But yeah, the planner might choose, may choose or may not choose uh, index only scan. It still may, may, they may think index mm. scan is better because the second component, like I agree with everything you said so far, but then you say we don't consult heap. Well, in, in general case, index only scan consults heap because uh, we don't have visibility information still, right? But uh, it in some cases, it skips it because of... Do you count the visibility map as the heap? Yes. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean... We we check visibility map and and see what bit it has in terms of all visible bit all for the for the page and heap we need, 
if it um, is, is if it's if that page is marked as all visible we like this is a win but it's not guaranteed it may be not marked as vi all visible in this case it's kind of degradation to behavior of index scan for this particular value of in uh, reference to, to tuple right and we need to go to to heap and and see first see if this tuple is visible to our session and second probably we will jump inside page to proper position because of heap only tuple chain right but yeah that's it so i mean you, you, you everything is right but uh, it's not guaranteed that we won't consult heap yeah good yes exactly good point um so heap this is you'll see this in explain plans as heap fetches uh, if you're running explain mm -hmm. analyze um, even if buffers in, is not used in, in explain analyze buffers so yes if you, even if you skip buffers this kind of buffers you still get because yeah, yeah. in fact if imagine if you didn't have heap fetches and you only had buffers you'd have to be running it twice to spot these like once uh, yeah, anyway, so it's. I really like that they call this out explicitly. Uh, it's really helpful. Yeah. And as you mentioned, like it, let's say we're we're scanning l many many rows for our index only scan. So we're doing like a range scan across maybe returning a hundred rows or something, and we only have to do one or two heap fetches. That can still be a huge win. It's only if the proportion grows to like a, a decent. Mm -hmm. So so. To, yeah, two big benefits. Let's go back to like why even have, why even bother with all that work to make the visibility map crash safe? Why even go like go to the trouble of doing this? It's not only the benefit of not having to to do those reads on the heap, but also I think data locality. Like if we're if we're doing a range scan, the hundred values on the index are likely in a much smaller range of index pages than they would be heat pages i mean if if they were all inserted in order and there have been very few updates maybe they are of course only a relatively small number of pages but they could be anywhere it could be really random reads so i think historically especially if you consider when this was added doing those random reads on the heap could be uh, quite a lot more expensive than doing the well uh, reads Right, and uh, if uh, exactly if, if there is no data locality, uh, each tuple sits in its own page, basically buffer, and we have a lot of buffer operations additionally yeah. to to just to check visibility, basically in this case. If we if we have all values already in index, we, this a lot of buffer operations just to check visibility. It's yes. super. It feels super inefficient, and index only optimization is. It's uh, index only scans is just an optimization of index scans. Yeah. But, uh, right. And, but they like, they be, they be super good if visibility, like if you have, for example, if you just loaded your data into a table, uh, uh run a vacuum fa once on the table and d d don't do any writes anymore. This is perfect situation. Heap fetches will be zero. The best case for index only scans. But yeah. in the worst situation, you will have the maximum number of uh, heap fetches, and this should be like maybe like the same number of buffer operations as index scans. It plus, right. you've had to check the visibility map, which admittedly is not many reads. Like a visibility yeah. map is tiny, but you don't have to check that if you're doing an index scan. Like it's oh, so it you think index only scan in this extreme case is worse than index scan? Hmm, tiny bit. I know planner but, might decide. I, I think based on the state of visibility map, in some cases, it, it might decide to choose uh, index scan, even conditions. Can the main condition is met? Is it so? I don't uh, know that it does. Like in theory, that would make okay. sense. I don't know for sure that it does. It's worth checking. It's it's a simple experiment. Worth yeah. checking and looking at buffers. Yeah. But uh, for simplicity, thing to mem number one thing to memorize: index-only scan. If you have auto vacuum tuned, index-only scan is the best what you can get from Postgres. For example, for uh, for aggregate select count things like that. If you get index-only scan, even if it's like a lot, a lot of rows, this is the best. Well, I completely agree. 
Index only scan and hip fetches zero. This is the and, ideal and situation. And one more condition. Rows removed by filter zero as well. So I see sometimes people get excited because oh, they see an right. index yeah. scan or an index only scan. And then they stop yeah. because they think I've got an index only scan, but it's returning a oh. hundred rows for every. So it has get this, one yeah. row, right? Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so because... Row. So there is this like one other gotcha that sometimes catches right. beginners out. You would never be caught out by that. But some people see index only scan, they think, great, I'm done. And actually it's still hideously inefficient. So yes. yeah, that, they're, the, they're the two things we look out for yeah. in PG Master. Okay, well. so yes, uh, in phrasing this, uh, you really need those rows that index, scan, index, index only scan brought to you, right? You yes. really need them. Because if you see 99% was like filtered out, it means those rows were not needed in the first place and you just need to find better index, for example. Exactly. Also, let's touch this thing. You create an index, you run vacuum, no writes yet. You run select count star from this table or select column, indexed column like ID, for example. Yeah. Which like technically the same because it cannot be null. We know the, the we know count won't count rows, which is null. Like and star cannot be null even if or like it's it's complicated. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we should save it for another episode about yeah. counts, right? But uh, you run it, but you still see sequ uh, sequential scan in the plan. This is happening all the time. That's right? a good point. Yeah, good point. So it can or parallel sequential scan or, or parallel sequential scan. <laughs> you think why? Why like index is better, right? Because index only scan is better. We, I know it, like it's much fewer buffer hits or reads or both, right? Like what to do, what to do? You well, know the so, answer, right? Yeah, I will, yeah. So before we jump straight to it, you can use, if you want to ask this kind of question yourself, there's like some parameters that we can set locally to help us diagnose these things. So we could use enable sex scan and set that to false briefly. And then hopefully that will encourage an index only scan. We can compare the costs. And once you compare the costs, it should become clear. How to compare the cost? Uh, disable sex scan and look. Run, explain, analyze, select right. counts, or maybe with buffers. But you, you don't need it. In fact, if you don't even need analyze. Yeah, yeah. Just, just because explain. of it. We want to compare planning cost. And if sequential scan was chosen, it means the cost was lower than for index only scan. Yes, exactly. And then I'm guessing where you're going with this is probably random page cost. Right. This happens if you have default random page cost. And it doesn't make sense if you have fast disks, uh, random access is close to sequential access uh, on SSD and VME, right? In memory, it's also so. You might have very slow magnetic disks, but uh, database is well cached and you rely on it somehow, right? It also can happen still. Uh, in this case, uh, random page cost is four compared to sequential page, co page cost is one. And uh, to walk in B3, it's random access compared to page by page um, reading of uh, heap sequentially. So index scan, index only scan, the planner, the planner looks at random page cost. If it's four time, times more expensive, it might prefer sequential cost. Especially sequential if it can do it in parallel, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, uh, index scan and index only scan also can be parallel. Oh, true, so good kind point. Kind of like we have duplicated. So yeah, we have- actually, maybe that doesn't matter. Yeah, good point. Bitmap scan, index scan, index only scan, sex scan, and then parallel, parallelized versions of them, right? Yeah, I skip bitmap scan in the in to keep oh. things simpler. Um, yeah, but we is. maybe should do a whole episode on that because it is yeah, it's it interesting is. enough. Yeah, yeah, and uh, for index scan parallelization cannot be as I remember it cannot be applied to uh, navigating inside B three inside the tree, going from root to leaf, but it can be applied to fetching the leaf uh, fetching leaf pages. In the in tree and also accessing heap, heap and also uh, traversing leaf nodes, so it has bidirectional li list for for all the uh, leaf nodes, allowing not going up and down all the time like 
not starting from root for each entry, right? We just need the first entry. And then it, I think it's going to be parallelized dealing with leaf nodes. This is what I remember. I, I might be slightly wrong about the internals here. But again, cool. like index only scan is the best if you need a lot of rows. For count, select count star, you might still seeing sequential scan. It's a good sign you have not tuned random page cost. We, should, we recommend to everyone to do sooner because later it will be more uh, feel it will feel more risky if you scarier, have yeah 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 scarier because you have yeah. heavy workload and changing this might flip your plans in some unpredictable manner so yeah it's a big task but, but if you do it early live with it it's like feels more like reasonable than keeping yeah. defaults defaults yeah and and uh, i ha did you have cases when you see this okay cost for sequential scan is uh, lower that's why i chose it but when you say enable sex count to off uh, given some huge penalty to sequential operations in planner's mind then you see uh, timing and buffer operations so much better for index on the yeah. scan like you think oh wow planner is so wrong here you had it yeah i have it all the time yeah. Right. And this is a good sign we need to change random page cost by default yeah. in all databases, basically. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think we've discussed this in previous episodes, but uh, mm -hmm. in the past, I've seen like conservatively people go down to two, but. And you know, there is. Right? I mean, ah, not two. I, I, I was thinking why default is still four? Why, you know, like, why is it, why is it still four? The default. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I've seen argument or I've seen people mention that they don't want uh like people have old systems and they don't want uh to change those. But yeah, old no, systems already exist. <laughs> I I agree with you, but but that is the argument I've heard. Defaults are applied to new systems. New systems I, I understand are on SSD mostly. But that's what people say, and I actually think also even if they didn't, like also, you know, it's not it's not about old systems versus new systems. It's about SSDs versus spinning disk. Like it's it's about disk type mostly. Most people aren't setting up new systems on spinning disk. Like most people are setting saying, up. Yes. Disk. Yeah. So, if, in that case, why are we forcing the majority to have to change their default instead it's of like annoying. default should like be JIT. for the majority? Yeah. It's second place after JIT, or maybe default shared buffers. Third place. Third place for, for <laughs> goes to random page cost. Let's have maybe some chart of um, like uh, de defaults we don't like. We would like to be changed. By the way, things are changing slowly. Yesterday I, I learned that PJ dump is not a backup tool anymore. It's off topic, yeah, but nice. it's very that similar. Nice. To, yeah, so many years of discussing and discussing. It's like it's not a back. Like you're like swimming against current all the time like you, you say something but you open documentation and it says this and you know every, every experienced guy says this but still so defaults are similar similar to so postgres until version 18 in documentation stated pg dump is a backup tool like first set sentence about pg dump and finally like five days ago peter eisentraut committed the change PG dump is a tool to export PostgreSQL databases, Yay. not backup. And uh, but this will change only like in a year in PostgreSQL 18. But it's already a win, like so good. I hope defaults also will, like they are slowly changing. L yeah. Log Work checkpoint mem. was on WorkMem. Yeah, is it hash, what is it? Right? HashMem multiplier has been like WorkMem has been increasing very slowly over the years. HashMem yeah. multiplier doubled in like not that long ago. Like there was. Auto vacuum default throttling 10 times, but it was many years already ago. Yeah, yeah slowly it's, uh, it's, it's changing. It's good. So random patch cost, most people say decrease it 1.1. Maybe you said some guys decide to go with two. Well, yeah. I, 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 I can say some guys decide to put one there, but yeah, put four to sec patch cost. What? Yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I... so uh, I've seen sensible people that have done testing. I've seen set anywhere between one point one and two, and 
uh, I tended to go closer to 1.1 if the yeah, performance results. Yeah, Crunchy, I think that's really cool. after we did the episode yes. about something, they tested it and uh, published some details. Maybe we'll find an, an attach. So yeah. they, 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 their benchmarks show that 1.1 in, in their case, I think it's AWS and GCP or something, right? It's still in their case, they found out that uh, 1.1 is slightly better than 1.0. According to some benchmarks, not mine. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. So since then, I I also got kind of like put one point one before I I tried to put one point zero, one point zero. So I don't know. Like one point one is good to start, right? Yeah. Enough, maybe here. Let's go through a few like other recommendations. Okay, I think this is like one recommendation of something that you can do to encourage index only scans, or like mm -hmm. recommendations that are around index only scans. We did a whole episode, for example, on over-indexing, and I think that's relevant here. Because Before I we think go to over-indexing, one second. It's super yeah. important to tune out to vacuum because otherwise yeah. hip fetches will be super high and you need to, you need uh, to vacuum. Auto vacuum is not only about vacuuming or collection of statistics or fighting with transaction and multi exact ID wraparounds. It's also important because it maintains visibility maps. Yes, right. and it's the only thing that maintains, but it's like it's the only thing that can set those bits directly. To... Yes, yes, directly. But I think this is important because any like, let's say we've got a page in Postgres that has twenty tuples on it, like really common to have like a couple of dozen of tuples on a page. If any of those rows are changed, the visibility of that row, like the, the bit gets it's out uh, of the game. Yeah, this page Yeah, it needs goes to from one to zero, right? It goes right. it goes from all visible to not all visible or not guaranteed to be all visible. And no, only no, it's not it's not all visible, that's it. Like we, we don't know, but it's already cannot be considered all visible, that's it. Yeah, technically so, the, these tuples might be visible to everyone. Auto vacuum just didn't mark it. it didn't yet. get there yet. Yeah, yeah, so what Wacom needs needs to do this as well. That's why uh, frequent visits of tables are so important, not only because of deleting that tuples. Yes. Now, is I guess it is possible that you will never benefit from index only scans if you have tape, but maybe like a small table that's const that the rows are constantly being updated. But if you most of us have tables where, or at least the, like the cases we're thinking about here. You have like some data that's pretty old that doesn't change often that we do still want to read. And like in those cases, as long as you can, yeah, tuning auto vacuum is super valuable for maintaining the performance of index only scans. Yeah. Right. What, um, is there anything else around that? Like I, I actually shared just recently in my newsletter, uh, an old post by Thomas Vondra. I thought it was a, I revisited it. He's updated it for the latest versions of Postgres. I'll share it again because I think it's so good on. Oh yeah, yeah. I also saw that's great. I actually, expected this because uh, after they acquired uh, Second Quadrant, they broke that blog and some links didn't work. And uh, like it's, I used archive.org to to fetch some old pages. It's great. This post needed to be updated. I also think they should yeah. be part of documentation. Honestly, nice. Well, high praise. Right. Yeah. So, but the documentation tends to avoid uh, good how tos and to, like kind of so far like only basics and, and yeah there are how to notes and documentation, but uh, they are scattered among general documentation reference style and so on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I I wish uh, documentation grew like huge how to section, but it's a different story. But like let's not to, to lose this important point in this context. So auto vacuum maintains visibility map, which has this all visible. It also has all frozen, but it's a different story. All visible, two bits for each page. And if we have a lot of writes, like many writes are happening, many pages are having zero for all visible bit. And uh, what's important here to understand that partitioning is so good. Yeah. Right? Like if you just consider unpartitioned one terabyte table and partitioned one where old partitions, like most of writes go to the latest or few latest partitions and all partitions are like, they can be, they can receive writes, but it happens rarely. 
yeah. and vacuum aggressively, fairly frequently visit such pages. Oh, okay, some write happened in all partition, but I immediately mark this page all visible and it's only one page in this partition. That's why, like archive, archive data locality and archive kind partitions, old ones and only new or the, the latest receives all inserts, some updates, they usually for fresh data. It means this, uh, like old partitions, most of the time will be all visible for all their pages. This is so good if uh, massive reads are needed for all data. Without partitioning, any page can suddenly receive a write. Even if all, like all rows in this page are five years old, and then suddenly, oh, there is some place here. Let's, let's insert new tuple and, uh, it, it's out of. So everything is shuffled, right? <laughs> all new data and old data, they can live in the same page. And visib for visibility ma map, it's kind of a lot of work for auto vacuum and visibility map is most of the time is kind of like in bad shape. So what I'm trying to say, partitioning is needed not only because indexes become smaller. This uh, this reason is like over years I realized this one of the smallest reasons for me, because B3 height grow very slow. Like I mean, you know, right? But uh, this particular thing, this may be number one reason since recently I realized it. Wow, year ago. You yeah, think yeah. So. for partitioning like. We can say, okay, this partition is barely touched in terms of rights. We just read it because people want to see archive data. But reading is like well organized most of the time. Like if it, if we need counts or something, it's index index only scans with heap fetches close very close to zero, right? Without partitioning, phew, impossible, right? I mean. And then predict less predictable also. Yeah, I mean, in the case you're talking about where it's append mostly and it's to the to the right of the yeah, I, I definitely seen cases where you, you you don't touch old data anyway, whether it's partitioned or not. But I definitely I, I see this as yet another benefit of partitioning. I'm I'm surprised you said it's like you see it as the biggest, but that's really cool. Well, actually, I think if we, for example decide to create additional indexes to support index only scans and we will talk about methods right now right but if, and index write amplification i i know we, yeah. we plan it but if you for example decide usually we keep the same sets of indexes on all partitions right but technically we, you can create an index for a particular partition and if for example you created it for like kind of archive style partitions to support uh, index only scan to to prioritize them for reads and you maybe don't care about write amplification because again, mm -hmm. these partitions barely receive writes and hot updates also we don't care. We care about, we, so we might decide to create more indexes for all partitions uh, to and benefit from yeah, all these scans, right? And I've keep, not seen that, but it's a cool idea. It's just like, I don't know, maybe it's a crazy idea. Maybe we'll have some walls hit <laughs> uh, if we implement it, but, but it seems reasonable. And for fresh, part I never did it. Uh, like just because but for fresh partition you avoid creating these indexes because you want uh, hot updates hot updates occurring so mm -hmm. right yeah let's let's maybe d dive into details a little bit i yeah well or we could point people towards the over, we did a whole episode on over indexing and we did another one on hot right. updates so I, let's point people at those because i think there's a couple more like definitely want to get your thoughts on the difference between multi-column index and include like when I, you use each so, or when it was released again like 11 12 10 10 11 i don't remember I some many check. some many years already many years ago and um, i was thinking is it only for unique indexes honestly like i remember i had anastasia no. lubenikova presented on postgres tv details some details and yeah or maybe it was interview because she participated in this include keyword covering indexes, right? So my, my understanding, we only need like, we, it might be size difference also, right? Because if, if we want to put in a, a new column to have multi column index, one more column, we just included it, it will, it will participate in structure, right? 
Yes. But if, if we say include, we, it's just additionally stored in leaf nodes, right? Leaf page, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, it means that kind of for to achieve index only scans, both cases work, but first case can be also, also used as, since it's in structure, it can be used to verify uniqueness or maybe also constrain exclusion. Exclusion constraints, yeah. so exclusion constraints, right? Maybe for range types, uh, it's a different story, but definitely for uniqueness. And I now realized actually we cannot put some data type uh, columns of some data type to multi-column index, but we can put them to include. This is also benefit of include. So unique constraint can 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 like we we don't want to put index because it will break the logic of uniqueness, right? But we can put additional column for inc to include and have index on the scan, not changing logic of unique constraint. I see what but you mean. also yeah. to include, we can put data types which uh, are not uh, B three friendly, which are not supported by B three, like or not array, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polygons or something like points. Uh, Although you do need to be careful with size, right? Of course, yes, of course, size matters. But imagine we have like point two two numbers, right? So we can we can put it to include, and the index only scans will happen. I've got one more thing that I wanted to make sure we mentioned, which was something practical and very beginner friendly that, well, in fact, probably the main thing that I see stopping index only scans in, in the real world, which is people selecting more data than they need. Yeah. Um, and I know it's kind of obvious, but it's really common in RRMs to have select star be the default, which is almost always going to be giving you more columns than you actually need for that specific query but i see people doing it, it like people deleting features for example like uh changing how a page is structured in an application and they no longer need all the data from the the, the, the queries returning but don't change the query like there's uh, there's so many ways it can creep into people's code that they no longer need all the data they're returning so mm. being like careful on that front and also just remembering that there are these optimizations if you can be yeah, even if the application does currently use all of the columns, do we need to? Like, what, what value is that adding uh, right, at the moment? Right, Can you right. make things much faster by not including that information at that point? Right. Yes. And finally, maybe let's mention also uh, hot updates. I will already like, kind of mention that uh, indirectly, but directly, like if you have, if you, if you need to put extra uh, one more column to index, either to, doesn't matter if it's to, to extend this multi-column list or to include, to, to have coverage for your selects, you can lose hotness of some updates, right? Because even if it, even if it's uh, in, include still this, if this column is updated frequently, these updates cannot be hot. They will be much slower. They will be regular updates. So it's better sometimes to avoid this. So this is trade off here. You we won't select only scans, but you lose hot updates. <laughs> so what's yeah, well, what's actually, needed? Selects or writes? I mean updates. Yeah. It, I know that this is very off topic, but do you know heap only tuple updates are no longer heap only in some cases? Like in Brin there's some changes to Brin indexes. Have you seen this? Uh no, I and see. now yeah, now it updates the Brin index. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think we covered enough, right? Yeah. For hundred percent. For iOS. When I hear iOS, I think index only scans, right? That's so funny. Are you on Android or iOS? I'm on iOS, yes. My phone, I mean. Index only scans. Cool, cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.